The first capitol building for the state of Iowa would have been in Iowa City. Iowa became a state in 1846 and our capital was located in Iowa City at that time. We moved the capital to Des Moines in 1857 and we chose Des Moines because of the central location. When we came here in 1857, this building wasn't built yet and we used a building just across the street called the Old Brick Capitol. And the Old Brick Capitol served as our seat of government for about 30 years and we also used it as our seat of government while we were building this building. The Capitol was built between 1871 and 1886. It took us 15 years to build this building. However, it was dedicated in 1884 and it has been in use since then. They selected this location because it is the highest point in the city of Des Moines. Uh, this is where the glaciers stopped, uh, the last glaciers that came into this area. So it created a very large hill here on the east side of the river. But it was also chosen because the land was given to them. And it was given to the state of Iowa by Wilson Alexander Scott and Harrison Lyon. They donated about 10 acres to the state of Iowa, the purpose to build the capital in this spot. And the dome is probably the most noticeable part of the building as you come into the city. Uh, there really is not a location in the city that you don't notice the dome rising up from the landscape. We are the only capital that has five domes. Uh, the largest dome, the center dome, is 275 feet tall, and it is covered with real gold. Uh, we are one of 10 gold dome capitals. The dome is 80 feet in diameter. Uh, from the outside, again, it's 275 feet. From the inside, you actually see about 219 feet. Uh, as is common with a lot of domes, you have an interior wall and an exterior wall, and that's so that you can actually decorate that interior area. So there's a lot of empty space up in the dome. The gilding on the dome will last for a very, very long time. And I know that that's difficult for people to understand that that thin, thin layer of gold will last for so long, but it really is more durable than any other thing that they could put up there. Uh, for example, we could paint the dome, but then it would probably need to be painted about every year or every two years. Uh, the gold will last for about 30 years, so it really is more economical to cover the dome with gold. We could leave it just uh, copper, which is what the other four domes are covered with. Um, underneath that layer of gold on the large dome, of course, there is a layer of copper. But that copper oxidizes and it runs, and you find that that green runs down onto the stone of the Capitol building, and it's very destructive. So again, it helps to preserve the stone on the building to cover it with gold, and uh, you have to admit it's very striking. The first time the gold was put on the dome in 1885, we spent about $3,500 on the project. That, of course, would have included the labor. Um, we put it on again in 1905. We put it on in 1927, 1965. By the time we got to 1999, the cost had risen to about $482,000. 160,000 of that paid for the gold and the rest paid for the labor. We are in the Senate chamber uh, on the second floor of the Capitol. The Senate chamber actually occupies the south corridor of the Capitol building. Uh, here in Iowa, we have 50 senators, and each one of those senators is elected to serve a four-year term. We have a part-time legislature here in Iowa, and that means that they're here in the Capitol building working for about four months of the year. When their work is done here, they go back to wherever they live in the state of Iowa, and almost all of them go back to work at their regular jobs. We have senators who are veterinarians, who are doctors. They may work for a, an insurance company, a bank. They may own their own small business. Uh, anything that you can imagine doing for a living, our, our elected officials would do for a living. In the Senate, it's divided by the aisle. So we have Republicans on one side of the aisle, Democrats on the other side of the aisle. If we have more than 25 um, of either Republicans or Democrats, of course, they would fall over to the opposite side of the aisle. Right now, we have a Democratic majority in our Senate, and uh, so the Democrats have the majority here by just a couple of votes. The Democrats would sit here on the left side of the chamber, and the Republicans would sit on the right side of the chamber.
The furnishings that are in this room are original furnishings. Uh, this room really has seen very few changes through the years. It's one of the few places in the building that the decorative painting was never painted over. So when you look at our ceiling here, you're looking at a ceiling that was painted in about 1883, and it has never been painted over. It was done by an artist named Miragoli, and Miragoli did a lot of work in our building when it was being built. He did the Senate chamber, he did the House of Representatives, the law library. All of his work is gone now. It was either painted over or was destroyed by the fire that we had here in 1904. So this is the only original work by him that we have left. You're also looking at original gas chandeliers that were converted to electricity. Again, the only place in the building that we can say that. When the Capitol building was built, it was lit by gas. We didn't put electricity in the building until the turn of the century. When we put electric lights in the building, we took all the beautiful gas chandeliers that we had, we simply took them down and we threw them away. So as we do the restoration in the building, we have to make reproduction light fixtures, but that was not necessary in this room. Uh, these are original gas chandeliers. They weigh about 500 pounds each. We are in the House of Representatives. Uh, we are on the second floor of the Capitol, and this is the north corridor of the building. The House of Representatives is made up of 100 members, and each member is elected to serve a two-year term here in the House. So we elect uh, the entire House of Representatives every time we have an election here in Iowa. Every one of these members must run for re-election. Here in the House chamber, you're going to find a lot of similarities to the Senate. Uh, they're here the same time of year. They're talking about the same bills. They're even paid the same amount of money. Senators and representatives make approximately $25,000 per year. The House of Representatives is not divided by the aisle. Uh, the chairs here or the seats here are chosen according to seniority. So whoever has been here the longest gets to choose their seat first. So you will find them intermingled, uh, Democrats and Republicans here in the House chamber. The House chamber is very different if you look at the design in the room. And that's because we had a fire in this end of the building. The fire was in January of 1904. We were changing from gas lights to electric lights, and electricians had been hired to run electrical lines through the walls of the Capitol building. They were working inside those walls by candlelight, and one of those workmen left his work area and left a candle burning. That's how the fire started. The fire started behind this room, and it burned up inside the walls and burned across the ceiling. And the ceiling in this room collapsed. We had to rebuild that ceiling. When we did that, we didn't try to make it look like it had looked before. We just built a new ceiling because we needed to use the room. And because of that, it really does look much different than the rest of the building. Uh, the ceiling here is newer than the rest of the building, so you'll find a very different design. In the Senate chamber, we saw a lot of color, a lot of pattern. In this room, you will not see that. A lot of very neutral colors, lots of browns and greens and tans, but also a lot of gold leaf. Gold leaf must have been very popular at that time. That's the only explanation that I can give you. But the areas that were redone after the fire contain a lot of gold leaf. It's that same thin, thin layer of gold that we find on the outside of our dome. And it's applied the same way. It has to all be done by hand and it's glued on to the surface, both outside and inside. <music>the law library uh, on the second floor of the Capitol building. We're on the west side of the building now. The law library actually takes up the whole west side of the Capitol on the second and the third floors. The law library contains about 100,000 law books and it is open to the public. Anyone is allowed to come in here and use these books. You have to be a lawyer or an elected official if you want to check a book out of the library. The five different levels here in the library um, are lined by the iron railings, and the iron staircases on either end of the room are the only access to those different levels. The staircases are accessible just to the librarians, so the general public would come in, tell the librarian what they need, and the librarian would go up the steps and get it for them. The law library has always looked like this. Uh, it has not been changed much through the years of using the building. We have original tile floors here in the law library. The ceiling has been restored to look like it looked in the 1880s. Uh, chandeliers are reproduction lights that have been installed in the Capitol building, and that was done in the uh, 1990s and early 2000s that we did a lot of restoration work here on the interior of the Capitol. 
when they were building the Capitol, this building, or this room, excuse me, was actually designed to be only half as tall as it is now. And the commissioners who were in charge of building this building traveled to Michigan. And they took a look at their library and they came back and they said, tear out the ceiling that's already in place. We want the library to go all the way up. We want it to be two stories tall rather than just one. So they did make that change in the design. And uh, we have the, the Michigan Capitol to thank for that. Uh, unfortunately, in that Capitol building, their law library now has been changed and uh, their grand library is gone and they have a room that's only half as tall as it was originally when the building was built. So the evidence of, of what this building was designed after in Michigan is gone now. We do have um, kind of a remarkable special collection here in the law library. We have a collection of old English law here in our library uh, that you would not find in most libraries throughout the world. Uh, and the law librarians here are very, very proud of that collection. Uh, we also have an original card catalog here in the library. Of course, that's how we would have found books in the library. Uh, most of us that are, are 50 years old plus remember using the card catalog. Nowadays, of course, that's all done by computer. But the card catalog will stay in the room. It's an original part of the room. It's not updated any longer, uh, but it would have been in here originally. The law library is actually organized by the Harvard system. There are systems for organizing legal libraries. So we don't use the decimal system here. We use the Harvard system. And that's why the librarians are so crucial to the process, because they really are the only ones who know exactly where the books are located. So even with the card catalog, even with the computer system, when you come in this library, that uh, system does not really help you locate a book. So you're at the mercy of the librarians to tell them what you want, and then they will find it for you. We're in the rotunda on the second floor of the Capitol, and behind me you'll see the large mural westward. This was painted by Edwin Blashfield. It's to symbolize the pioneers as they moved from civilization into the wilderness to the west, and it was done in 1905. Uh, the mural is 40 feet long and 14 feet high, and when you look at the details of the mural, you will notice that to the far left-hand side of the painting, you see kind of a desolate area, uh, and that represents the prairie, that represents the unknown. When you look at the right side of the mural, you'll notice that you're looking at plowed fields, planted crops, and you'll also notice, if you look very carefully, that there are faces painted into the stalks of corn. And those faces would represent the men that would come after those pioneers. If you look at the wagon, the figure that's in the center, the young woman that's in the center, the model for that person, uh, her name was Jessica Penn. And Jessica Penn was one of those uh, unbelievable success stories that came out of Iowa. Um, it would kind of be like an Iowa girl goes and becomes the, you know, the most famous model in the world. That's really kind of what happened to her. Uh, Jessica Penn modeled for tons of artists, including Edward Blashfield. She happened to be one of his favorites. And um, she was a beautiful, beautiful girl. She did a great deal of her modeling when she was very young. She would have been in her teens, 15, 16, 17 years old. And if you really look at that face and, and, and kind of commit it to memory, well, if you ever go to Wisconsin, for example, in their General Assembly chamber, they have a large mural that's done by Blashfield. If you look at that mural, your eye will go and you'll say, oh my gosh, that's Jessica Penn. He used her again and again and again. Um, she was, um, she was just a very famous person. She died, I think, when she was, oh gosh, I want to say late 40s, early 50s, and she died absolutely penniless. I hope they walk away with an appreciation for the, the beauty of the building. Uh, we have a beautiful Capitol building, not just architecturally, but the interior decoration. But I also hope that they walk away with a sense that we are using the building for the purpose that it was built. Uh, it was built as the seat of government 130 years ago, and it is still very much so the seat of government for the state of Iowa. So it's a very functional, useful building.